As we get older, we begin to forget many facts and many events. But there are some things which we should never, ever, ever forget. God and his word is first. But the other thing that we should never forget are the sacrifices that other people have made on our behalf, especially those who have served as veterans. Some things we should never, ever forget. A few years ago, the Navy christened a ship named the USS New York. It was built with 24 tons of scrap steel from the World Trade Center. The steel was melted down to cast the ship's bow section. When it was poured into the molds, those big, rough steel workers treated it with total reverence. It was a spiritual moment for everybody there. The motto of this ship, you know what it was? Never forget. Never forget 9-11. Now, it's not about holding a grudge like, I'm never going to forget and I'm going to get you for it. No. It's for never forget the blood that was shed so that we can enjoy the freedoms we have. I never want to forget those who have lost sons, daughters, husbands, mothers, fathers for the freedom we enjoy this morning. I never want to forget firefighters, rescue workers, medical workers, nurses, aides on the front lines of fighting illnesses. And I never want to forget Christ followers. Christ followers who have gone before us, passing down the faith, especially under times of persecution. Without them, we would not be worshiping as we are today. This weekend, we honor those who served. We honor soldiers who didn't come back. The ones whom Abraham Lincoln said gave the last full measure of devotion. Jesus said, I will show you a better way. Greater love has no one than this, than that he lay his life down for a friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. And this is my command, says Jesus. Love one another love one another. The greatest act of love in human history was Jesus' sacrifice. The Bible makes it very clear that Jesus knew what he was doing when he allowed himself to be crucified on the cross that stands before us in this sanctuary. He could have stopped his suffering at any time. This kind of love, it's not motivated by emotions. I feel in love, I feel loving. That kind of love comes and goes. It does not come naturally, though. It is a radical choice kind of love. And as Jesus' followers, you and I were expected to be willing to do the same for others. Love others as Jesus loves us. During Desert Storm, Newscaster Sam Donaldson was interviewing a young, a young private. How do you think the battle's going to go, said Sam Donaldson. Are you afraid? The private replied, eh, we'll do okay. I'm not afraid because I'm with my family. I'm with my family, this platoon. They're my family. We'll take care of each other. That's what he said. Do you think that young private would be willing to lay down his life for those other men and women that he called his family? Absolutely. Because he loved them. He knew they loved him. He had the courage. He had the commitment to do anything necessary to protect them, to protect those he called his family. So many of our worshipers have said, People in this congregation are closer to me than my biological family. Many of you feel that way here. 
Imagine if we could point to any member of our church and say, that's my brother. She's my sister. We take care of each other. Isn't that awesome to be in a community where you can say that? That kind of love changes not only our congregations, not only the church. That kind of love will change our society where we're fighting with each other, arguing with each other. If we can call each other brothers and sisters in Christ and truly look out for each other, we can make a difference. That kind of love becomes unstoppable. The world, the gates of hell will not overcome it. And those around us who witness our love for each other, they'll have to say, there's something different about those people at Como Community Church. I want what they've got. That's right, I want what you've got. Peace and love. They are a nice thing to sing about, aren't they? But without the hard work of peacemaking, war will always erupt in our midst. Almost every song I hear on the radio, it's like love, love, love. Peacemaking, however, takes a lot of work. It doesn't just come naturally. In conflict, we always focus on who's right and who's wrong. Hey, it's their fault. It's not my fault. They did it. That's how it is in our society, in politics. That's how it is. On Thanksgiving, when we get together with our loved ones, we're going to be arguing maybe. Maybe not. Our natural reaction is to blame others and focus on their wrongs. But Jesus calls those of us in conflict to look at ourselves first. You know, when you point the finger at someone else, when you point one finger at someone else, how many fingers are pointing back at you? Three of them, right? Yeah, we're all part of this. He knows that the blame game always makes conflict worse. So how do we begin to make things right in this world? We start with good old number one, me, myself, and I. How are we going to bring peace on earth? We start at home by first looking at ourselves. Jesus says, and we read it in Scripture, why do you look for the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to this, the big old plank in your eye? Think about it. He's going, it's called hyperbole. He's making a big point here. How can you say to your, your brother, let me get that little speck out of your eye when you've got a big plank, you can't even see the little speck. First, take the plank out of your eye. Then... You can help others with a speck in theirs. Now, Jesus, he's not completely dismissing blame, but he's putting it in perspective. Instead of pointing the finger, instead of blaming others, you and I need to look at ourselves and ask, what must I do to make things right? What must I do? You can always say, I, by the way, I used to be a bartender in college, and all these people would belly up to the bar and complain, somebody ought to do something about this. And I'm thinking, it starts with you, pal. Quit complaining about somebody else. It starts with you. It starts with me. It starts in our families. Dying to myself in the long run it may be just as hard. That's what we're called to do. Christianity, we are to die to ourselves, allowing the Holy Spirit in to transform us and begin to change at work in our families. It may be just as hard as what William Steiger's friend did. William Steiger 
He served in the Navy during World War II. One night, he was running his transport across the Atlantic when he noticed the white trail of a torpedo coming right towards his shoop shoop ship. Hundreds of soldiers were on William Steiger's troop ship. And if that torpedo hits, hundreds and hundreds of men would go to the bottom of the ocean. The potential loss of life would be devastating. Nearby, another small ship had also seen the white trail of that torpedo coming towards the troop ship. The captain of that smaller ship, that smaller vessel, maneuvered his ship in between the transport and the torpedo. Can you imagine? He sacrificed his ship, the men on his little ship. The explosion destroyed that entire ship. All aboard died on that little ship. William Steiger said, the skipper of that ship, he was my best friend. He saw what was happening, and he sacrificed his life and the life of his men to save my ship and the hundreds and hundreds of lives they were saved. Ever since that day, I have asked myself, have I honored his death by helping others and living life to the fullest? When someone sacrifices for us, we've got to ask the same. Have I honored them? Have I made it up to them? Every day is a gift from that moment on for William Steiger. Jesus has given his life so that you may have everlasting life forever and ever and ever and ever and everlasting life with God and our loved ones in him. How can we not be grateful? How can we not love others as he has loved us? Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Let's remember, peacemaking on this Veterans Day weekend, peacemaking isn't easy. It's hard work. It doesn't start with the UN. Peacemaking doesn't start with our government. Peacemaking starts in your home, in your heart and mind. As I said this Thanksgiving, just in a couple weeks, you're going to have your work cut out for you, right? If you can sit down with that turkey in front of you and those mashed potatoes and gravy, and people start talking about politics or sports or, God, or world events, you got to remember, I'm a peacemaker. I'm a child of Christ. Help me, Lord, to cut them slack. Help me not to get into it and make it enemies of my family. This Veterans Day weekend, before we point to the speck in another person's eye, you know it. Take the plank out of your own eye. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with who? Let's hear it. Me. Me.